Greetings, my name is John Gabriel, and this is the new Calculus channel. I want to talk about something I've discussed in the past, again today, something very important, something which is permeated, unfortunately permeated almost all of mainstream mathematics, and that is Euler's blunder. So that's what I'm going to discuss in this video. And again, as I usually do, I'll give you a different perspective. So let's begin. Now, uh, a series is shown to you above here where I'm hovering my pointing device. This series is equal to the sum of k equals 1 to infinity. Of course, such a sum, by the way, is not possible. And if you look at Rudin's uh, famous analysis te textbook, his real analysis textbook, which has been used in almost every real analysis course on the planet. He says that this uh, doesn't mean an actual sum to infinity. Okay, It's just to indicate that there is a general term, in other words, 3 over 10 to the k, and that this is a special kind of series, in fact a geometric series, which converges to one third. Okay, but if you write it this way, uh, zero point three 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 followed by an ellipsis is shorthand for this expression. Okay, it doesn't mean that this is infinite or it goes on uh, forever. There is no such thing as infinity. It is a one hundred percent pure junk concept has no place in mathematics or in any other field of rational thought. Now, don't talk to me about uh, the delusional George Cantor set theory or the Zermelo Frankel axioms. That's all a whole load of garbage, which has never replaced the sound foundations of mathematics, which are Euclid's elements. There are no other sound foundations of mathematics. Now, the limit of the series, by the way, as I said here, the limit is not 0 0.033 dot dot dot. No, 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 no. This is just shorthand for the series. The limit of the series is one third. Why? Because this expression here, where I'm pointing my mouse without the limit and without this, is called a partial sum. And if you take the limit of any partial sum, doesn't matter how uh, large n becomes, it will always be a third. So I'm using this expression lim s to indicate this process here, okay? So please don't give me your hand-waving bullshit about sequences and series because the, for this particular subject, there is, there is zero difference between, uh, between uh, a series and a sequence. Absolutely zero difference, all right? So now... Um, S stands for the series, and lim S stands for the limit of the series, okay? And uh, <clears throat> we know that uh, what the mainstream says is this ridiculous thing, is they say that the series is equal to the series, the series up top here, is equal to its limit, its limit, one-third. First of all, they're totally different objects, okay? Uh, the one is a series, and the other one is a well-formed number, which is one-third, okay? So they're saying this is equal to this. That's wrong, okay? Because, why? Because the series, S, is not the same as Lim S, okay? It's not the same as Lim S. You understand that? Okay. So, as Rudin says, the series or the sum is not determinable, nor is it even to be thought of in the same sense as a sum, which is determinable. And, he, and of course, this limit is determinable. And it's very easy to show in real analysis, 
or even without real analysis, it's very easy to show that the limit of the series or the sequence derived from the series is determinable. Okay? So, um, I know I've made a video like this in the past, but I haven't explained it as well as I have now. So, the problem is really unfortunate because uh, Euler's textbook, if he hadn't made so many mistakes and inserted so much garbage about infinity in his elements of algebra, and I usually call it algebraish because it has so many errors, it actually would still have been one of the best algebra textbooks. Uh, I mean that. Uh, uh, his, uh, and he also had some great ideas about uh, approximating differentials and uh, solving differential equations, but he made some serious blunders, okay? Euler had some issues. I don't care that he solved the Basel problem. <laughs> big deal. It's, it's not a big deal. Um, I, I think what Newton did was better than any of the others that came after him, by the way. And uh, when I refer to what he did, I'm talking about his, about the ingenious way in which he found a series for sine, okay? Uh, without using calculus. And by the way, I have a better method than that, which I've never shared with you, and I'm not going to, because of the way I've been treated, and because I've call, been called a crank. You will, you will not even find it in 50 years, because you're all just simply not, I'm afraid, up to it. Okay. So, uh, in other words, you're stupid. And that's, to be brutally honest, that's the truth. You're just too stupid to find it, and you won't. But in any case, uh, so you cannot write 0 0.333 dot 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 is equal to one third. It's not, okay? They're not the same thing. And you cannot say that the series is equal to its limit. And then finally, we have the most important number theorem in mathematics, which tells us that a third has no representation in base 10. Okay, it has no representation. A quarter has, or anything uh, that can be represented in a fixed number of significant digits is a representation, but there's no such thing as an infinite representation. Think, people, think, or try to think. I know uh, most of you, especially you math professors and math teachers, have about three brain cells. But if you try to activate one of them, you might actually get to understand what I'm telling you. And you know, the people who are the most vile, in my opinion, and the most dishonest are those that do not accept correction. You are called mainstream cranks. And by the way, a crank is not somebody who disagrees with the views of the mainstream. In some cases, in most cases, that's true. And, and it's true because uh, uh, cranks can say some really stupid things. But a mainstream crank is one, and this is a definition of a mainstream mainstream crank is one who cannot be convinced in the face of overwhelming evidence. You ought to be bloody well ashamed of yourselves, you vile reptiles. Okay, you need to come forth, you need to uh, uh, change your laughable Wikipedia entries where you have 0 0.999 equals to 1 and all your other bullshit. For example, you know, your Dedekind cuts and your Cauchy sequences, n neither of those provide a valid construction of that mythical object called a real number. There is no such thing as a real number, you fucking morons, okay? And you are morons because you don't know, you have no definition of number. I was the one that revealed that to you. I, the great John Gabriel, revealed that to you. A number is a name given to a measure that describes a magnitude. And that means rational numbers. There aren't any other numbers. Pi is not a number. It is an incommensurable magnitude. No, that doesn't mean a rational number because then it would be a number. And to be a, a number means expressible as a ratio. Get it, you idiots? Hmm, think about it. Okay, so... I've talked a lot about this, and it's very important uh, because uh, somebody might also come turn around and say, well, oh, but why do they have a repeating pattern? Because it's an attempted measure and a property of a rational number 
in a base which doesn't contain its prime factors. You fucking idiots. Did you understand that? Okay. And why can't you represent an incommensurable magnitude like pi? Because it's a property of an incommensurable magnitude that it cannot be measured in any base or in any way. Not even the gods, Zephs or Theos, as they call them commonly in Greek, or any of the other gods could measure pi or the square root of two. Do you think that you unbelievably stupid, incorrigibly stupid morons can measure pi? Do you think that if you could produce trillions and trillions of digits and you did nothing else every day for the rest of eternity, that you've measured pi? Really? Do you really think that? Gosh, if you do, there is no hope for you. You are simply the biggest moron one can be. Okay? So, please, don't be retards. Reject this bullshit once and for all. Uh... Tell your educators, every single one of them, call them out. If you do not call them out, they will continue to preach this bullshit. And trust, don't trust me. Examine what I tell you and see that it is what I'm telling you it is. Nonsense. It's anti-mathematical garbage, which is never going to change. It doesn't matter how many times they tell you that it's being proved. It's never being proved. There's nothing to prove in S is equal to limb S, by the way. It's a definition. Euler, where I'm pointing, made this definition, and it's it, it's a it's a it's an ill-formed definition. Okay, it's wrong, 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 and always will be wrong. I am the great John Gabriel, the discoverer of the first rigorous formulation of calculus in human history. I shall place a link to all the relevant materials in the details section. I hope you will take me seriously because you know what? Your mathematical future depends on it. This is a new calculus channel. And once again, I'm John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.